Okay, grab your seats, guys. Okay, so um, I'm going to require your participation in this next piece. Um, so as I mentioned, Theta Healing is an energy healing modality aimed at changing limiting beliefs to empowering ones. So um, earlier, both Vanya and Sky took you through what we call downloads, where we gave you empowering beliefs, instilled empowering beliefs into your subconscious mind, and released negative ones. Okay, so when we, when we do a download... Okay, it's being given from the energy of the creator, the divine universal intelligence. So it's not our version of what it feels like to be loved or to be healthy. It's the truth from the divine. Does that make sense? So we have our definitions that we learnt from our parents about definitions of what love is, definitions of what parenting is, of what sexuality is. We got these inaccurate definitions, right? So perhaps maybe your mother loved you conditionally. If you're a good girl, dress nicely and behave well, then I'll love you. Right, but if you rebel and have your opinion, I'll give you the silent treatment. Anyone got that one? Silent treatment? Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so maybe that was your father, right? Do well in school, get good grades. You must perform because you're an extension of me. And if you do bad, that's a, represent that's a bad representation of me. I'm, that must mean I'm a bad father. So you must excel. You must be perfect or else I beat you. Anyone had that one? Yeah. Very inconducive to learning, by the way, to be beaten. Right? Threatened, threatened with a stick to do your times tables. Right, that was fun, right? <laughs> okay, so can you see how we get these distorted understanding definitions of love? That love became conditional, right? And so when we release this definition of what you think love is and replace it with the creator's truth, then you can, then, then you can know what it feels like to express that in your own life so that you don't repeat the patterns of your parents. Does it make sense? So if your parents loved you through control and submission then you may be repeating those patterns with your own friends, family, children. Does it make sense? And so we start to collapse these, these inaccurate definitions and start bringing in new empowering definitions, then you are free to love from a, a much higher place, a much higher place, right? So um, when we make the changes, we make the changes on what we call the four levels, four levels. The first one is what we call core level. Core level is from the moment you were born to now. So you looked up at mommy and daddy, and when I grew up, my father says, money doesn't grow on trees. Right? The, the, a belief of not enough. Not enough. Who got told that one? We can't afford it. Not enough. Yeah? Oh, that's not for us. Right? We, we heard all that all the time. So I grew up in communist Poland. Um, it was, there was a lot of struggle. There was rationing for meat and butter and things like that. And at one point, I think my mother um, uh, slid on the ice and broke her leg. And that was enough. She was done. She said, I've had enough. We're leaving. We're going. And so we escaped. We escaped, escaped uh, communist Poland. We moved to Austria. And for the first year in Austria, my memories, I was about five years old, we were living in an attic uh, in a hotel. And I remember my father laying down the mouse traps to catch the mice in the attic. So at five, I'm thinking, this is fun, without realizing that we're living in a rodent-infested loft, right? Um, and I remember this one moment where... Um, my mother said, there's no dinner. There's no dinner tonight. The food's not good. But I was hungry. I was crying. I was like, I'm hungry. So mum gave me the schnitzel, and I ended up with the most excruciating stomach ache. And so I learned very early on, if mum says the food is bad, you don't eat the food, right? And so I remember running up and down the stairs with the other children eating like butter on toast with salt, right? I thought it was cool. And then I grew up realizing, shit, we were poor, <laughs> right? But you realize that later, it's like, ooh, they were hard times. You know, my mother gave birth to her third child in that attic, right? And so I carry these beliefs as I, as I grew up around the not enoughness, that I didn't deserve to have nice things in my life. I wasn't worthy of that, right? So some of my students who came to um, the recent class, um, Game of Life, I gave them homework. And the homework was an opportunity to up-level. And then what does that mean? That means that what you currently, where you currently go, where you currently shop, you would up level. So, for example, if you're shopping at your, for your clothing at, say, the supermarket, you up level as to a, a boutique store. Does that make sense? If you're currently shopping at the boutique store, you step into Chanel, right? Right? You've got the, you know, the pit bulls at the, at the door, right? The marble floors, right? You walk in and you own it. I deserve to be here. But for a very long time, I wouldn't dare walk into those department stores. Like, oh, no, no, I mustn't. I can't go in there. I'm too scared. They'll find out I'm, I, I'm not worthy to be in the shop. But at the end of the day, it's a bit of fabric on a coat hanger with a price attached to it. That's all it is. So I was making myself less worthy than that bit of fabric on a coat hanger. 
Because our parents, my parents told us, that's not for us. We can't afford it. Does, does that make sense? And so I challenged myself. I stepped into these department stores. I would feel the fabric, and the fabric feels so good. <laughs> it's not like TK Maxx at all, <laughs> right? You know, I would, you know, I would smell the gorgeous candles, right? Who's tactile? Who's a touchy-feely person? Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if it's like cashmere, it feels so good, right? Versus viscose. <laughs> you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So this is a homework for you guys after this meditation evening. I challenge you to up-level an area of your life, right? So if you're currently doing Uber where you're sharing it with everybody and it takes you forever to get home because he has to route all across London before he gets you home, book your own Uber, right? I challenge you, right? Instead of buying the cheap, nasty coffee because it's like a pound 99, it's a bargain, Buy a really good cup of quality coffee that you actually enjoy and taste. Does it make sense? I know it seems very, something very small, but it will change the quality of your life. You'll start to feel different as you start to treat yourself to higher standards. Make sense? Right? For me, it's like a matcha latte. It's going to be a good matcha. It's going to be good, right? I want to savor the flavors. I want to nourish my body, and I want to enjoy the experience. I won't put anything in my mouth that I do not like, but I used to. I used to, I tolerated less standards because I didn't think I was worth more. Does that make sense? Yeah. And this is what we mean when we claim out our power, where we start to diminish ourselves, where we start to make a piece of clothing worth more than us, yeah, or a job title worth more than us. So as I'm tuning into the room this evening, I feel like there's, there's so much potential in the room, and it's like you're waiting for permission from somebody. It's like you're waiting, like, one day I'll be happy, one day I'll be successful, one day I'll win the lotto, like you're waiting for that one day. One day he'll show up and I'll be happy. It's like you're waiting for something. But the truth is you've got to give yourself permission. You can't wait because no one's going to give you that permission. Right? How long are you willing to wait? Right? You're, the answer is you're not. Like now's the time. You've got to give it to yourself. Okay, so when we, um, so the first level is core level. The next one is what we call uh, genetic. So inside our DNA, we carry our belief systems from our ancestors. Okay. The beliefs of your mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, going back seven generations. So we're talking about 400 years, approximately. So the beliefs of, say, sex, 400 years ago. How was sex perceived 400 years ago? Very taboo, yeah? Religion, like, said, no, you mustn't, right? Don't enjoy it, right? They made the orgasm evil. What a shame. <laughs> Right? Yeah? Okay? Yeah, only on Sundays, in the dark. <laughs> or for procreation only. Right? Yeah? Okay, what about beliefs of women in the workplace 400 years ago? Where were your ancestors 400, five, four to 500 years ago? At home? Yeah? So probably running the farm, taking care of the house, giving birth to babies, right? Without midwives, right? It's just a pot of boiling water and... Yeah, squatting in a corner, right? But you got the job done because we've done it for millions of years. We can do it, right? Okay, what about men in the workplace four, five, four to 500 years ago? Outside? Yeah, men were working very hard, very, very hard. Out, out in the weather, there wasn't obviously machinery, so they were doing everything by hand, okay? Like whatever they reap, they sow, so the hard work from the land was brought to the table in the house. Right? In some nations, they were still out hunting for the animal. And so sometimes they became the hunted, and the husband didn't come home because he became the meal. Right? It was hard. Right? So then we have these beliefs about it's, you have to work hard. Right? So who's running that belief? You have to work hard. Be honest. Be honest. Right? Yeah. So this is, this is a false belief that you have to always work hard. Because if you have that belief, you always make everything hard. Okay, achieving a career, hard. Releasing weight, hard. Exercising, you'll make it hard. You'll make everything hard because of this belief. Well, if I work really hard for it, then I deserve it because it's blood, sweat, and tears. We make statues and in heroes. We deify these people who struggled and went through pain and suffering. It's like, well, I have to pain, go through pain and suffering like this person, then I'll achieve this success. Can you see how that might be a problem? That we're using struggle and hardship to achieve success. So who's in that boat right now? Be honest. Yeah, working long hours, doing the overtime, really pushing, really hustling, right? Okay, you guys aren't being honest. I feel many of you are. 
right? For a long time, that was me. For a long time, that was me. I thought I had to work really hard to achieve the success in my life, my business, actually in all areas of my life. That was a story I was telling myself because my ancestors worked hard. Okay, then the next level is what we call history level. History level is past life. Okay, so this is not your first rodeo. Okay, you guys are old souls. You've had lots of incarnations. Okay, so previous incarnations. Also what we call collective consciousness. So um, there's the collective consciousness of London. London has like a, a belief system. So right now in the UK, there's a collective consciousness around Brexit. Right? You, the rest of the world doesn't even know what Brexit is, just so you guys know. Like if you go outside of UK... Nobody cares. Nobody knows. It's a, it's a UK thing. But for the UK, everyone's a little bit uncertain. They're not sure. They're staying put in jobs they don't like. They're not sure what to do with their businesses. There's a lot of uncertainty in the collective consciousness of the UK because of this term Brexit. Like whether we're in or out, like life will go on. I promise you. Right? The UK will survive with or without. Right? Life will go on. Do not panic. Right? Okay? So we have collective consciousness around, for example, diseases like the collective consciousness of cancer. So when you hear the word cancer, most people think, oh my God, terminal, death. People go, oh, they get afraid. That's sitting in the energy and collective consciousness of the word cancer or diabetes or AIDS. Are you, do you, are you with me? Yeah? Okay. And so then finally, the last level is what we call the soul level, all that you are. So that you're, you're a spiritual being in a physical body, and the spirit has a soul, the greater version of you but can also carry belief systems as well. So in Theta Healing, when we make changes, we make changes on all those levels simultaneously. That's how it works. Okay, so we're going to do what with something called muscle testing. Muscle testing is a way to find what beliefs you're carrying in your subconscious mind. So um, just watch me first, and I'm going to get you guys to do this. I'm going to stand sideways so you can see me. So muscle testing is a form of applied kinesiology where we can find out what beliefs we're running. Right. So you may not be aware of some of the limiting beliefs you're carrying, Right? Because some of these beliefs aren't yours. They could be ancestral, past life, right? Okay? And so we can test through our nervous system and through into our subconscious mind. So basically, you're going to be standing with your feet hip width apart, okay? And you're just going to soften your knees slightly. Just soften. You're going to stand up straight and you'll say, yes, yes, yes. And what will happen is your body will slightly tip forwards, okay? You need to relax your muscles. Okay? If you're standing straight, you are not going to move. So just chillax, right? And you'll say, no, no, no and you'll slightly tip backwards, okay? So that's what will happen. And so this is like your internal guidance system, right? Okay, now you can fake it and you can go like this and like that. Yes, you can do that, but you're cheating yourself. So what you want to do is just see, where does my body want to go? So I'm going to go forwards or backwards. So a yes response is a strong response. We tend to go forwards, okay? And a no response, we will go backwards. So now we know that the muscle testing is working correctly. We've got a tool that we can use to find out what beliefs are we running in our subconscious mind. So we can start asking our subconscious beliefs like, I love myself. Okay, well, that's, that's a good thing, isn't it? Because I'm a teacher. <laughs> Phew, right? <laughs> right? Now, if I had gone backwards, that would have meant a no. So on some level, I'm not loving myself. So I mentioned um, at the beginning of this meditation that in all the healings I have done, the most common thread that I've worked with is the not enoughness. The belief of I love myself, no, is in about 98% of my clients. 98%, which means the majority of humanity does not know how to love themselves because we have these distorted beliefs about what it means to love ourselves, right? Maybe it's if I love myself, I'm being vain, yeah? If, you know, you, you spent too much time in front of the mirror, right, as teenagers, like, teasing your hair and... Well, that was for me in the 80s, teasing the hair. That was in back then, right? But what have you did in front of the mirror, right? Um, so you may have distorted understanding or beliefs about what it means to, to love yourself. And so to love yourself may mean that you're selfish. Maybe you should be putting other people first because it's wrong to put yourself first. So you may be running beliefs around you have to sacrifice yourself for others, right? So some of you may be running a belief where other people are more important than you. You must put other people first, Right? So you know when you're, you're on the aeroplane and they tell you put your gas mask on first and the kids? There's a reason why. Right? Because if you pass out, you can't help the children or anybody else for that matter. You must help yourself first. So if you're struggling, if you're in difficulty and you're giving away your last penny, you're screwed. You can't help anybody. You must help yourself first. And it's not being selfish, it's been loving. Because if you build yourself up, if you love yourself and take care of yourself, have your needs met, then you can help others. Does it make sense? But many people, particularly healers, we give, 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 give until there's nothing left. 
We sacrifice ourselves for other people and we think that is love because that's what maybe we have been taught. Put others before yourself. But you do that all the time. Right? Now, there's a time to put other people first. There's a time to do that. So if you have your baby in your hands and it's screaming and it needs feeding, then yes, you bring it to the breast. I bring it to the breast while I'm eating at the same time. Multitasking, right? So there are times when you need to put other people first, but m not all the time. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. So when we're muscle testing, you just allow your body to go forwards or backwards and see what truth your body gives you. Don't worry what anybody else has. Like, don't be looking, oh, she's got that limiting belief, right? Don't worry about anybody else. This is about you, <laughs> right? <laughs> no judgment here. No judgment, right? We all want you to rise. We all want you to shine. We're all at different levels. This is not a competition or a race, okay? As far as the credit is concerned, you guys are perfect. You're just not seeing it, right? Okay, so please stand up. Okay, so feet hip width apart and just softening your knees. Okay, you're going to close your eyes and just relax. And you'll say, yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just see where your body wants to tip. So you should be tipping forwards. Some of you will be a gentle tip. Some of you will fall quite far. Okay, you will go back to center. And now say, no, no, no. No, no, no. Okay, good. Okay. Wonderful. For some of you who's, who's not working, you're probably a bit dehydrated. Okay, so can I just like energetically hydrate you guys? Is that okay? Because we've got a lot of bodies in the room tonight and, you're, and it's hot, so let's just hydrate you. Okay, check again. So say, I'm a man. I'm a man. All right, so if you're a man, you've gone forwards. If you're a woman, you've gone backwards. Okay, back to center. I'm a woman. Okay, some of you are like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'll tell you why that is, because sometimes women try to be men. In the, maybe in the corporate sector, have to be the man, right? Doesn't mean you are a man, it's like you feel like you have to. Does it make sense? Or maybe if you're the man and you've, you've got the belief that I'm a woman, maybe you, you are demasculated by somebody else who's trying to oppress you and bully you. Does it make sense? So can we just correct that for you guys? So if you're a man, you're a man. If you're a woman, you're a woman. Thank you. Panic over. <laughs> good, good. Okay. All right. So let's check some beliefs now. So you, it's very important you say it out loud. Okay, not just think it. You must say it out loud. So let's make the statement, I love myself. I love myself. Okay, good. Lots of people going forward. That's a good sign. Okay, let's try this one. I hate myself. I hate myself. Okay, some going forward, some going back. Okay, so if you went forwards, that's a yes. So we may have given lots of excuses for hating ourselves, eating that entire chocolate cake. Yeah? Yeah, where you didn't show restraint, for example, or hating certain behaviors about yourself, or hating your body. We can create lots of excuses for self-hate, right? So we're going to release that belief. So can I release an awful levels for you guys that I hate myself? Yes. Thank you. I replace it with the greatest truth of I love myself. Would you like this? Yes. Thank you. Okay, and the healing only works if you give me permission. So if you stay silent and don't say anything, I haven't got your permission to make this change. The way healing works is I need your permission to make the change for you. So for those of you who definitely want to love yourselves, just say yes. Yes. That's better. Thank you. And let's let go of any conditions you've placed on loving yourself, whether it's losing a few pounds, making more millions, whatever condition you've placed, right? Less gray hairs, whatever that is. Can we release all the excuses you've given yourself for denying yourself love to show it looks like and feels like to love yourself just the way you are, knowing you can become better and better? Yes. yes. Thank you. That's better. Good. Okay, so let's check again. So I love myself. Awesome. It's like an ocean wave. Whoosh. Awesome. Good. Good. Okay. So let's check this one. So I'm worthy of success. I'm worthy of success. Okay. Some yeses, some noes. Okay. Um, try this one. Rich people are greedy. Rich people are greedy. Okay. Some yeses, some noes. Okay. So if you believe rich people are greedy, then actually you will spend every cent you get. You'll try and get rid of it all. 
because you don't want to be seen as greedy or corrupt or selfish. Does it make sense? So you will manifest the brown envelope from the government, <laughs> right? You will break the washing machine, yeah? You'll get that parking ticket, right? Or someone will need to borrow money off you. So the moment money comes in, you will spend it or, find it, or sub unconsciously create this stuff that will make you get rid of it because some of you believe that it's, I'm going to be greedy if I have more money. Does it make sense? Or a belief that, check this one, it's dangerous to have money. Oh, some yeses and some noes. Okay, yeah. So if you were like, for example, in some, some of the European countries, if you had wealth, then the soldiers would come and take it. So everything your ancestors worked for, towards, right? They would literally rip off the chandeliers from the ceilings and take the pennies from the wall and the money from the drawer and take the watches and put it on their own wrists. So you're like, well, why even bother creating wealth? Because they're just going to take it. If I have nothing, nobody can take it. Can you see how this might be a problem to accumulate wealth in your life? Make sense? Okay. So with your permission, can we release those beliefs? Yes. Thank you. So anyway, you believe that rich people are greedy, corrupt, selfish, taking advantage of others. Anywhere it's dangerous to have money or wealth or prosperity, let's release that. And let's replace it with creator's truth, and that it is your birthright to be abundant in all life areas. Yes. Thank you. That you know what it feels like to accumulate wealth, to be able to share it with others. Yes. Thank you. That by being abundant and prosperous, you become more generous. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. And teach you what it looks like and feels like to, have, to feel safe in having money, saving money, and investing money. Would you like this? Yes. Thank you. Good. Okay, so let's check again. So, um, uh, rich people are evil. Rich people are evil. No, good. Awesome. Okay, um... Uh, what was the other one? Ah, oh, that's it. It's dangerous to have money. It's dangerous to have money. Good. Awesome. Okay, so many of you went backwards on that one. Okay, all right. Um, let's try another one. My power is dangerous. My power is dangerous. Okay, some no's and some yeses. Okay. <coughs> it's safe to be my power. It's safe to be my power. Some yeses and noes. Okay. Um, I'm afraid I'll hurt others with my power. I'm afraid I'll hurt others with my power. Oh, lots of yeses in that one. Okay. So that could be a childhood trauma where maybe you hit your younger brother or sister, right? Because you thought they replaced you. It's like, no, I'm the favorite. I'm first. Me, 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 me. Right? Or maybe it was a child at school. Right? So somewhere in child, maybe you misused your power because you were learning how not to misuse it. Maybe you got told off. Maybe you were shamed. Maybe you were punished. Right? Maybe you bullied somebody as a kid because you got bullied by your parents. There's lots of different instances. So can we bring forgiveness? Forgiveness from the first point of trauma when you misused your power. Yeah? yeah? Is that okay? Thank you. Just breathe, guys. Breathe. Let that energy come in. Let it go. You know what it is. Maybe you did something that you're ashamed of, that you really regret. It's time to let that go and replace it with forgiveness. Good. Well done. And let's replace it with creator's truth that you're worthy and deserving of being in your power, standing in your power, standing in your light. Would you like this? Yes. yes. And how to use your power with restraint and discernment. Would you like this? Yes. Thank you. How to live without fear in your power. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so let's check again. So, it's safe to be my power. It's safe to be my power. 
Awesome, good. My power is dangerous. My power is dangerous. Okay, so still some yeses and some noes. That needs a bit more unpicking. Okay. Um, I can use my power for good. Oh, lots of yeses. Awesome. Well done. Well done. Grab a seat. Well done. Well done. Okay, easy? Yeah, it's that easy, right? So as adults, we over overcomplicate things. So when I asked the divine to make those changes, we're done on every level of your being, okay? So in this instance, I witnessed for you. So as a practitioner, um, witnessing is seeing, feeling, sensing, or knowing. So it's an intuitive skill. So Creator, universal intelligence, God, whatever you call that power, shows me the healing being done for all of you, okay? And, and I can generally sense who accepts the changes and who doesn't. Some of you are like, no, no, I want to hold on to this pain for a little bit longer because it serves me, right? So I can generally see who's accepting and who's not. So witnessing could be seeing, feeling, sensing, or knowing. Sometimes I don't see anything intuitively. It's just like a knowing the healing is going in. It's a bit like when you're, you're in a lift and you hit the ground floor. I feel that in my body. It's like, okay, it's gone in. So sometimes I feel it. Sometimes I feel it. So there's many ways to witness. So in this next section, I'm going to get you guys to witness your own healings, okay? And I just want you to remember to breathe, because some of you are like, uh, this healing works. My life's a mess. I need my shit fixed, right? So you remember to breathe. Breathe. Br breath brings spirit into the body. As you start to breathe, it actually brings life into your body, and the energy can flow more freely, okay? You're, you are made of light. Although this looks like a piece of meat, you're actually made of light. And so that breath will bring spirit into the body and it can flow through you and then the healing can be done much easier. So breath is important, okay? So I'm going to get you guys to witness your own healings. And as I said, it's seeing, feeling, sensing, or knowing. So we're going to do a couple of things here. The first I want to do is clear what's called hooks and cords. Hooks and cords seem to be from your solar plexus. So both um, uh, Vanya and Sky did some lovely work with you um, earlier today to start to open up this, the chakras, particularly the, the solar plexus. This is your seat of power. For both men and women, this is your seat of power. But this is all the place where we also give away our power too, right? So one of the ways we give away our power is, oh, poor you, you're not well, let me help you, right? And we literally leak energy to somebody because we feel sorry for them. So it's not love, it's pity, okay? Or it could be the other way around where somebody is, um, it's usually the mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, woe is me! I need all the attention, I'm not well, I've got this ache and pain, right? And she's like pulling and hooking your husband, <laughs> right? Draining him of life force. <laughs> so there's no energy in the bedroom, right? <laughs> so I'm tuning to somebody in the room. <laughs> I'm not going to ask for hands up. <laughs> So, but we have, we know, you guys know of people that literally drain you. It could be the friend that you're on the phone for two hours and she's bitching about her boyfriend. You're like, just leave him, just drop him. He's a bad guy. Oh, but I love him. Right? And like two hours later, you're like, I'm so exhausted because she was like literally draining energy from you. So we all have these people that we know who are like energetic vampires and they literally like, like hook into us like octopus suckers. <laughs> And, 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 and then, like, you know, two hours later, you get off the phone, it's like, oh, my God, that was tiring. But they weren't really looking for a solution. They were just looking for a bitch, right, a whinge, right? And we tolerate this, right? So when you start to really raise your authentic power, that also comes with raising your standards for what you'll accept and will not accept. What will you no longer accept, right? What behavior are you currently tolerating that you should not be tolerating? It's a waste of your time because that... Girlfriend of yours does not want a solution. She just wants to have a whinge. I mean, this whole, like, magazine's devoted to that gossip, right? There's an industry around gossip and bitching and whinging. I just choose not to participate in that. I don't have time for that. I'm too busy with my mission here on Earth. I'm here to awaken souls. I haven't got time for gossip. Does, it, does that make sense? Yes. Right? Like, I want to, like, raise the vibration of the planet, help people become abundant and prosperous and serve lots of people. Like, would it, would it be nice to actually have world peace and, like, stop world hunger? In our lifetime, like how amazing that would be, right? So I haven't got time for like gossip. It doesn't interest me. You, you with me? Yeah. yeah. So this is where you start to raise your standards for how you behave and how you expect other people around you to behave, what you will no longer tolerate. So maybe that's the, um, the colleague at the office who's bitching behind your back, right, to undermine you. And you're trying to overcompensate, to assert yourself, to prove yourself to the boss, I'm really good, I'm really good. In the meantime, 
This person's undermining you. Maybe it's your soulmate who's like pecking at you, etching at you, constant negativity, criticism. It wears you down. After years, it can wear you down. And you start to forget who you are, right? So I ask you, what behavior will you no longer tolerate? What are you willing to take a stand for? And that may be in the behavior of other people, but also your own behavior too, right? Very rarely will I go into a, a, like a, a com complaining rant. If I catch myself, I snap myself out of it because I know I'm spiraling downwards where I don't want to be, right? I catch myself, oh, I'm in complaining, shift myself out of it. What do I want instead? Instead of complaining about whatever issue that is, I'll re-entre it to, what is it do I want instead? Instead of this, what do I want? It's a very simple switch, and it now happens within, within seconds. Before, I would spiral down, and it would just, it would percolate all the way to the bottom. I'd be in despair and crying, and poor me, poor me, and I get stuck there, right? So I've trained myself to no longer tolerate that behavior in myself by changing my mindset. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, so I've just developed more mental discipline over my mind. So if I catch myself, I step myself out of it. Right? Like, pick yourself up. You've got a mission here. Get on with it. Right? Get over yourself, Anna. <laughs> Literally, this is my self-talk. This is my self-talk. Right. Um, okay, so, the, the, so I mentioned hooks and cords. So hooks and cords are where we're leaking energy to other people because we want to help them. And, and particularly, this is what I see in healers, is like you want to save the world. I want to save the planet, right? And so what we do is we drain our energy and, we, and, and also our bank account. We try and help and save, rescue everybody, and then we have nothing left for ourselves. Or the other way where people hook into us and we allow it. We allow it. So what we're going to do is we're going to like unhook these plugs, and the people that you're plugged into, we're just going to plug them up to the Creator's energy. So instead of draining your light, they're being plugged into the energy of the divine, which is infinite and abundant. Does that make sense? Easy? You ready? Okay, so some of you are getting like really triggered here. I was like, oh, the mother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, or that friend of yours that you really need to like unfriend from Facebook, right? You know who they are. Okay, you ready? Okay. Okay, so you just close your eyes, take a nice deep breath. Okay, so you're going to ex imagine expanding out past this room, across London. past the UK, across the planet, our Milky Way galaxy, all the galaxies just expanding further and further and further. You're not being stretched or pulled, you're simply sharing space and sharing molecules. Past the universe, into these bright lights, dark lights, bright lights, into this beautiful golden light. into this beautiful jelly-like substance with all the colors of the rainbow. And this is the laws of the universe, the law of attraction, the law of truth, the law of illusion, the law of time, the law of compassion. Expanding through this beautiful pink mist, the law of compassion, and straight into this beautiful, pearly, iridescent light, bright, bright white light. This is the energy of pure consciousness, the energy of the creator. You are made of this substance. Okay, so creative all that is, it is command to release any hooks and cords from me in the highest and best way. Thank you. It is done. It is done. It's done. Show us. And now you'll witness your own healing. Use your breath. See, feel, sense. The hooks and cords are released from you. They may be in front of your belly. They may be at the back. Some of them may be very, very old cords that have gone through many generations or many lifetimes. You may see the faces of the people you're corded to. Just release it with forgiveness. Use your breath. Remember, witnessing is seeing, feeling, sensing, or knowing. I'm also witnessing your healing as well. <coughs> and see so these cords being dissolved, cut away. <coughs> Maybe they're burnt or they evaporate. Okay, so can we show that you no longer need to hold on to these people as a way to help them or save them? Is that okay? How to live without allowing others to suck you dry? How to live without allowing others to take advantage of you and use you so you can be useful? Thank you. 
had to live that sacrificing yourself for others as a way to prove your love, devotion, and commitment. Thank you. Can we release the belief that sacrifice means love? Can we release that? And show it looks like and feels like to love yourself and others without sacrifice. Yes. Without self-sacrifice. Yes. Thank you. Good. Okay, can we bring through the highest definition and the same perspective of what true power really is versus what you think it is? Yes. Thank you. Can we release the, the fear that if you let go of these cords, that you are abandoning your family and loved ones? Can we release this? Yes. Okay, so all these cords are now going to be released from you, and almost imagine that they're going to be hooked up to the energy of the Creator. So you're not abandoning, letting people down. You're just shifting the energies that can be fed by the Creator's light. And as you do that, I want you to feel the sense of relief, feel your shoulders relaxing, feel your chest relaxing and expanding. Can you feel that sense of lightness, like, like this dead weight has been lifted from you? Feeling lighter and freer and more expanded. Right, and so now that you've been like, you've had your energy drained, right, we're going to fill you up. So creative all that is, is commanded to download unconditional love into every cell, molecule, atom of my body in the highest and best way. Thank you. It is done, it is done, it is done, and show us. And so now you'll witness, see, feel, sense, as unconditional love comes in through your crown chakra and fills your body with light. So it's going to replenish you, top you up, if you will. And I want you to breathe into all the areas that you, you feel is empty or dark or dense. It may be inside your liver where we hold anger. It might be in your kidneys where we hold resentment. It might be in your intestines where we hold abuse. It might be in your, in your legs where you were scared to move forward in your own path because you were holding yourself back for other people. So just breathe into those areas and see, feel, sense that white light goes to all those areas. And this energy of the Creator is, in, is in divinely intelligent, much more than we can imagine. So don't push it, don't direct it, just allow it to go where it needs to go. See, feel, sense as it flows into all the areas that it needs to where there's hurt, there's pain, there's loneliness, there's emptiness, where all the places of not enoughness. See it being dissolved and replaced with this beautiful unconditional love, this white light. And your body will start to glow, sparkle, like a luminescence. Breathe, let it in. Let go. Surrender. So what behavior will you no longer tolerate now in yourself or others? Just make a mental note. Where are you going to raise your standards so you can become the best, the best version of you? And make that decision with love, not criticism. Do it with a place of empowerment and love. How can you be more loving and kinder to your body? What simple step or action do you need to take to honor your body temple? I'm 
And last question, how can I claim my authentic truth? Is it speaking up and speaking your truth? Is it exhibiting and showing your skills and talents at work? Maybe it's beginning to ask for what you want instead of compromising. Maybe it's playing more, laughing more. So how can I claim more of my true, authentic self? Nice deep breath. And open your eyes. Mmm, wow. You guys look so much better. Like, uh, this, the, today, oh, there's like this grey fog over everybody. I think some of you came in grumpy. There's this grey fog, and it's just like, everyone's like clear. It's beautiful. Okay, so who felt energy release from their solar plexus? Just raise your hand if you felt a shit nice and high so I can see. Good, amazing, well done, well done. Some of you, was it in the back? Yeah? For some of you, it was like these like old chains, like, you know, like those ships, like really old chains. So for me, that kind of tells me it's past life and it's really old stuff, really, really old stuff. Did anybody feel it from their throat? Some of you are like, I must be silent because I don't want to offend people, I don't upset people because, uh, you know, I, I, they won't love me, they'll reject me, I'll, I'll be in trouble. So I saw a lot of like popping in the throat. Okay, anything else? Who would like to share? The cr head, yeah, head, yeah. So this is, the crown chakra is obviously our connection to the universe, to the creator. So this is where we, we are fed by this divine light. So I think I remember when one of Vanya's classes, she said, we, we only get 7% of our energy from food, 7%. The rest is from the creator, right? We actually get all our life source energy from the, we are fed by this light. So what we do is we, we think we have to prove ourselves and prove our worth. And what we do is try to use our own energy. It's this hustle energy. And hustle is tiring. Who agrees? Hustle is tiring. Yeah, yeah, it's hustle, yeah. It's very, very tiny. So what we do is we pinch ourselves off from the creator. It's like, I'll do it all myself, right? I'll push this boulder by myself so I prove that I'm worthy. I'll prove that I'm good enough. Then I'll be the hero, right? But the moment you actually let go and surrender, and allow the creator to guide you, life becomes so much easier when you let go and surrender. Now, surrender doesn't mean you wave the white flag and say, oh, I give up, I'm done. No, surrender says, you know what? I let go to be guided by the creator in my life. So I choose to go with the flow that divine flow, that divine inspiration, and life becomes so much easier, right? We've been told we have to make it difficult, we have to struggle, but actually the more you let go, the more you place yourself in alignment with what you really want in your life, things start to unfold. But you must clear the beliefs, because your stuff does show up. You do manifest, your stuff does show up, but it comes with drama and trauma. And all that is, is beliefs in the way. When you ask the universe, when you manifest, can I please have this soulmate? Can I please have more money or this job or a healthier body? Please, please, please. You're asking. You're asking, but your hands are closed. Right? You've got to let go to receive. You've got to let go. And that letting go is that faith and trust that, like, God's got your back, basically. It's going to be okay. We'll survive Brexit. <laughs> right? Or the breakup. Right? Or the breakup. Whatever, whatever, like, the big drama is for you right now, like, you're going to survive. Like you're okay before him, and you're going to be okay after him. I promise you, right? Or her, right? You've got to let go, and that letting go is when it's like you get out of your own way, and then then the, the universe lines up itself for you, and then opportunities come to you, solutions come to you, right? When you let go of those old stories, those old stories of who you think you should be, based on what other people have told you. So I'm going to quickly wrap up, guys. Who was on my Facebook Live? Just a show of hands, Facebook Live recently? A few of you? Okay, so not many of you, so I can share the story. It's a bit rude. Right, so, because we started on sex, so we're going to finish on something else. Um, right, so anyway, so we have a, an instructor that we invite to the UK, uh, Mark Anthony, and he says, opinions are like assholes. Everyone has one. <laughs> right? I know it's a bit crass, but basically, there are so many people in your life that are giving you their opinion on who you should be and what you should do, right? So you're listening to your broke friend about money advice, yeah? Yeah, or your single mate about girlfriend advice. Can you see how this is a problem, right? We're looking to the wrong people for advice. We should be looking within. 
The truth is within. When we, when we, you come to our classes, we don't like stamp little like post-it notes on you and turn you into something else. All we're doing is stripping away the layers of lies that you've been bought and sold to you, so you can reveal the truth of who you really are. Yeah. And so there's a really, um, just I'm going to quickly finish. There's a really beautiful story, and it's the story of this clay Buddha. And it, they, there was this massive, huge clay Buddha on a mountain, and there was um, somebody that walked past this clay Buddha, and there was like a little crack in the back. And there was this light shining from it. And he's like, what is this light from this big clay Buddha? And he kind of picked at it, picked at it, picked at it. like, oh, my God, there's like something else behind here. So then they got an excavation team, and they started to excavate off this clay to find out what is underneath this, this clay Buddha. Underneath was a solid gold Buddha, solid gold. What had happened over, I think it was in Thailand somewhere, what happened was um, when the armies came through Asia during, the, during I think, the Mongol Wars, um, they covered this clay Buddha to stop, to stop it from being damaged because they would melt gold to pay for like, weapons, right? It was used as, as payment. So they thought if they covered it with dirt, people would think it's worthless and they would leave it alone, right? And so the people that, that covered it with gold, the, 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 the monks, then obviously perished because they were murdered in the wars. And so the knowledge went with them that, there was a gold Buddha underneath. So it wasn't until it was started to get weathered where the cracks started to show and then the, the Buddha was revealed that it was this beautiful, massive gold Buddha. And so here was, here's what happens to us as souls. We go through lifetime through lifetime, through experience through experience, where we start to think we are this dark, hard clay, these layers of lies and distortions. And sometimes we create this clay as a form of boundary to protect ourselves, like little energetic spikes we have, like stay away, I'm going to protect myself, right? Sometimes that is like carrying weight, carrying excess weight is my protection from the outside world, yeah? Or it could be aggressive behavior or standoffish behavior. There's many layers we have of distortions. It could be certain patterns and behaviors that we, we use to, to create this boundary. But this clay is an illusion. And because we've been covered in clay for so long, we think we are the dirt. We think we are the clay. This becomes our new truth. We forgot we are the gold. You are the gold. You are perfect. You just need to strip those layers away to reveal the goal that you are because you have forgotten who you are. And it's time to remember. And so, as I said at the beginning, you know, you do not serve the world standing in your shadow. You deserve to stand in the light. Each of you have got unique gifts and talents. You truly do. And they're, they're buried under this, this, this clay. And it's time to release those layers. How quickly do you want to do it? How quickly do you want to rise up and shine? Do you want to see that in, your, in this lifetime? Or are you going to continue to stand in your shadow? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.